So we will uh, call our meeting to order. We have uh, Phil with us on the Zoom. Who else do we have up there, Dorinda? I can't see the names. Right. Let's see. We have Bridget Browning. Yep. We have uh, Paul's iPhone. Okay. And who, let's see, who else? I'm we have Paula Otenti. Paula Otenti. Paula Otenti. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, Liz Scharf is not with us tonight. She's up in the air somewhere flying to a, uh, flying to, I believe, to a business meeting. Uh, so, we have what appears to be a relatively short agenda tonight. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the first item on the agenda is a highway report. Updates on town highway issues, exploring options for a truck to replace the international in FY26, action unlikely. Who's up, gentlemen? Um, I was, I yeah, so checking around, they're filling orders through 24 already. So if we're gonna get one for 25, 26, we're gonna probably wanna start thinking about ordering now. Yep. Um, that being said, I put together a uh, spec sheet for uh, the purchase of that. Yep. Um, just to kind of safeguard ourselves. Um, and it was sent along to you guys just to review. If, if you agree with that, I'm certainly willing to put that in play. Okay. I read through it. I mean, it looked, what, from what I could understand, it all looked good to me. I didn't see anything which seemed uh, crazy. Um, so who would, we, who would we ask to bid? I would give it to everybody. Or, well, who's, who's well, everybody? Well, we, have, we have International, yeah. which is uh, Alliance, or Allegiance, rather. We have uh, Freightliner, Western Star, and then Kenworth. We could put them out to all of them. We don't have to pick it, you know, any particular one other than the one we want. But you want to have as much feedback in as possible. And we don't even have to take the lowest. No, you don't no. have to take the Correct. lowest. Correct. I it's reviewed our uh, procurement policy, and it, and it says that and even this state, you don't have to pick the lowest, you pick what better suits the town. Right. So. Well, I can tell you what I'm, what I'm concerned about is what we've learned in a few of the recent go-arounds is I want information on what the experience has been with these particular trucks, engines, and transmissions, Absolutely. what their repair history is, and all that, because that's what just killed us when our trucks are laid up and they can't get parts for them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's almost more important than the real price, that and the warranty. The but warranty. the warranty's no good if they can't get the parts. And this one, you're spec'd out as an automatic transmission. Correct. Correct. It's a good thing, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, there were a few years there where I wondered whether it was the right thing, but I think they've got it figured out now. Well, yeah, I think I think in the big picture, you're better off with an automatic. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, that's that part of the highway report. Uh, the other thing I can report on is we have um, a broken spring on the freight liner that's getting repaired today. Should be done, actually, should be done now. Um, and that's about it. Everything else is still on. Do we have to vote on? Uh... No, I don't think so. We'll have to vote on what we buy. Right, no, but do we have to author, you know, authorize them? Bad word, but to send it out to whomever he chooses? No. No, no. I don't think so. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Very good. I don't think so. No. I mean, I'd rather ask now than uh, do no, it no, no. next week. But there's nobody, there's nobody we would exclude from that list based on bad reputation or issues or problems or... Well, it will certainly take all that into consideration when picking it. Right. Yeah, I would, I would say... But I wouldn't exclude anybody from putting a bid in. Right. No, I agree. Yeah, well, that's what right. I was just going to say is just put it out, put it out to the whole pool. And as we score the proposals coming back in, we consider, you know, their reputation as part of that, part of that scoring. Mm -hmm. Really, we've got to safeguard the town. 
Is there a deadline for them to send everything in? Well, yeah, I, I did put a date in that just because I didn't know. Said to be determined, I thought, yes, right? Yes, to be determined, yeah, because yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know when or where we were going to actually do it, so I didn't put a date in yet. Well, when, ideally, when would we want to order it? Well, we want to give ourselves a little over a year, so I would see this spring. Yeah, and this this is basic. I think you'll get some feedback from the from the vendors as far as how far out they are. I know I know we've experienced that when we call, they'll tell us flat out, you yeah, know, you're you, not looking until 25 probably. Right. And I noticed in here, you know, we're covering ourselves to say that we're not going to take delivery any earlier than July 1, 24 and no later than October uh in 24. Um so if those dates hold that um, one of the things I was thinking about, and I haven't had a chance to zip through the whole thing. I was just reading it before the meeting here. Um, but I know we opted for some additional stuff on the last truck we bought um, after we got it. Toolbox. Toolboxes and stuff like that. That's all in here. In okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah, as far as the delivery date, I put that in there. But obviously, if they're not building them until... After that, then you can't put a fictitious date in there. So. And how far ahead will they give us a firm price, or will they even give us a firm price? I would think that they would do it right off. Really? I would think so. Oh, we know what happened when we bought the last truck. Well, that's what I, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll find out. Was that right? five thousand extra? Well, 15? it was Bracket Creek right from the start. We got a bid. Then they came back before we agreed, and they went up on it. And then after we signed the contract, they went up the five thousand. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we'd certainly like to know what they were, because oh, that yeah. that sort of blindsided us, because I never expected that to be possible. And uh, you know, it's in the fine print of their proposal, but yeah. Well, we'll have to make sure we read the fine print. Well, and, and it might be a good conversation to have as we're putting as we're sending the proposals out to be to, to folks and yeah. so let them know that question. we've experienced that and we're, we weren't particularly fond of it um, I think the trucks that we've we've ordered they've held pricing when we've authorized you know the bill essentially so granted we're not buying you know trucks this size mm -hmm. you know but still well, I think it's worth saying when is the when is the price locked in? Yeah. Yeah, and that yeah. certainly a question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Plus the the uh, the specs are coming from our wheelhouse instead of theirs. Right. right. It's a good deal. Right. And we should also part of the you know part of their proposal should be that they, not we outline what the differences are between what we asked for and what they gave us. Because sometimes I know in my experience, going through line by line, they describe things a little differently than we describe them in our specs and you don't know whether it really lines up or not. So let's put the burden on them to tell us what the difference is. That's a good thought. Because mm -hmm. yep. a lot of that stuff, you know, do you really know what transmission you got? Do you really know what, who knows? So, get whatever they give us. So let's make them tell us what they give us. Okay. So Peter. Yes. Uh, I don't. Just to play. Uh, uh, well, not really the devil's advocate, but when do we decide uh, we might go electric? Did you ever give anybody ever give thought? I've asked him, and he he didn't. You know, we talked to the state. They have uh, they have a couple. But very limited what they do with them, they said. No, the big heavy trucks, not the. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the day is probably not too far off where we could consider well, getting I mean. an electric pickup. Oh, okay. I, I think, I mean, based on my understanding of what's, mm -hmm. what's available out there, I don't think that the availability of, of what we need is there yet. Um, but it's coming. It's coming. Um, I don't think it plays a role in this proposal. No, not at by all. Any, I just, I'm means, asking but. about the question, you know, because it's five years. The answer, I mean, the answer to the simple answer to your question is I think we'll know when the time is right. I mean, the state of Vermont I mean, will start buying them. Other people are stuck buying them. We'll hear how they work. Um, 
you know, we'll probably have to have a special power line and put in from the Green Mountain Power Substation to get enough power to our town garage to charge the things up. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, the answer is, you know, who knows? I mean, is it coming? Yeah, it's coming. But I just wanted to bring it up. I mean, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna spend a lot of money uh, 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 getting ready for uh, for the future here. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yep. But I think, you know, when, you know, I think what's going to come first is an electric pickup. And the question is, you know, most of the time we could probably get by with an electric pickup now, most of the time. But can you get by in the midst of a big snowstorm when you got to run the thing all day and all night? No, because in three hours or two hours or whatever it is, the battery's going to be dead. So, well, so the other have that. The other concern is if we're putting plows, if you're just talking pickups and stuff, if you're putting trying to put plows on, which we do the town pickup now. Absolutely. You know, that's a huge concern. Um, one from a capacity standpoint and two from just from a sheer suspension uh, standpoint. They're not making three quarter ton electric vehicles they will. right now. They, they will, will someday. You know, but, pretty quick they will. And it, well, all, all I'm saying is I think we'll know. I, I think just we'll know. When, when, Vic, when Vic puts a plow on his electric car, we'll know it's time to consider right. it seriously, right? I, I will say that it, the first time, and I don't want to take up too much, that this, this weekend, my car was outside because it was all salt. It's the first time I saw the forward propulsion reduced, and it cut the mileage right in half. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, like I had my... What I call my new pickup truck, which is a year old, year and a half old, three quarter ton, it would not shift into four wheel drive when it was 20 below zero. That was a little discouraging. I tried to go up my driveway. I had no traction at all. I couldn't figure out what's going on. It wasn't in four wheel drive, and it wouldn't go into four wheel drive. So, anyway, they don't design. I like the levers, you know, you pull the lever, you know it's in gear. There's no computer intervening in between that. Anyway. Okay. Well, no. So, what else, boys? Any, any, uh, any news on the chipper situation? No, no, I haven't moved much further on that yet. Okay. 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 Anything else, Victor? No, I had my five minutes of fame. There you go. There you go. Okay. Um, so I guess I guess the word is just so it's in the minutes. When you get organized and when you're ready, go ahead. Okay. Yep. Uh, considering Paul Tenti to serve as interim emergency management coordinator until a March reorganization meeting, action likely. And what's the reason for that, Sarah? Well, um, Margaret Schwartz, as you may remember, has resigned. She resigned yep. the week before we had the big, the, the big storm. Yep. And right now we should be working on our emergency management plan. It is due in April. Yeah. So I think Paula is has experience, and I think that she can help us get right into that plan so that it's available by March. Because if we bring Paula in in the middle of March, and we're gone in the middle of March, we're going to miss the deadline. Yeah. And she's interested in doing it. Yes. It Willing to do it. Yes. I probably believe Paula's here. Yes. Hi. <laughs> it, it's hard to say no to Sarah. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen to that. Okay. Is there a motion to that effect? Yes, I'll move that we uh, that we uh, uh, make uh, Paula Otenti. Yep. What? Yes, Paula Otenti. Right. As interim emergency management coordinator, coordinator until the March reorganizational meeting. Can I just ask one other question? Why would it be interim? Well, because you're supposed to make all your appointments in, in after the reorganizational meeting. Yeah, but don't don't all the appointments. Board, are, it'll be a different. Right, board. we would just reappoint if so. If it'll be it'll be what? Well, you're going to have new board members. So, you know, when the, that's the whole idea. I know this is a hard concept for us. No, but aren't we appointing someone? And I'm just asking the question. Yeah. We're appointing someone until until our organization. Yes, you can take out interim. 
Yeah, I just take out the interim. Unless you, unless you disagree. You're going to be, you're, there's going to be no interim. <laughs> Remove the word interim and yeah. make it. Uh, right. It's yeah. only for like, what, four weeks, five weeks? Yeah. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Bill? Who seconded that? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I did. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Here's an expensive one. Approving a memorandum of understanding for ambulance service with the city of Montpelier action likely. Um, we've got that in front of us here. Um, it's pricey. It's expensive. Yeah. And it affects current year budget and next year's budget because right. that was not how it was budgeted. So um, current year was budgeted for seventy two thousand and according to this it will come in at seventy six thousand five hundred. Right. And for FY twenty four we budgeted seventy six thousand and it will come in at seventy eight thousand four ninety five. So Yeah, because it straddles the two. Yeah. So we'll uh we're gonna be taking it. Here. But as I always say, we've got to have an ambulance, and I don't think we have any other options. And I do believe, um, from everything I hear, and I'm sure there are times when their service maybe isn't as timely as, as someone might like. For the most part, they do a good job. And thank goodness, you know, thank what goodness we have our fast squad to fill in the fill in some of the cracks. Yes. But you used to read it when you say this year, you mean fiscal year that ends in 20, and this, this summer. FY, FY 24. Okay, great. Thank you. You said 78,495? I but think so. Up Isn't above it? it says 8,490. Um, I took their two figures here because we would take July 15th of 24. 24. Right. No, wait a minute. So for the current year, it would be the December 23 payment, right, and the July 15 payment. So that would right. constitute FY23. Right. And then the next year, it would be, uh, so I'm now off on the second year because it would be 80,490. 80, 490. Yeah. yeah. Right. 80,490. Okay. So in bullet two, it outlines yeah. that. So I just wanted to make yeah. sure that. Yeah, thank you. So can you clarify that for me, Randy? Yeah. Well, uh, bullet two is just for uh, fiscal year 24, it's 76,500. And for fiscal year 25, it's 80,490. Yeah. 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 And I, the, only, the only other comment I would make about this is I think we can figure out pretty well everything they're trying to deal with in their budget in terms of. Uh, you know, payroll expenses, equipment expenses, everything else, they're all going up, I'm sure. Did so you, I was afraid this was going to be worse, to tell you the truth. Did you happen to look at the percentage of increase? No, no. I didn't okay. do that, go that far. Just, this just barely came in on, what, Friday, I think? Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't go that far. But, but I just made a note, I just pointing out that our budget's been set, it came in after our budget, right. so we're going to be able Not a new experience for us. And so it begins again. So any questions, any other questions or comments? Phil? You. You're good? I'm good. Yeah. Somebody willing to make a motion for approval? Sure. Sure. Move approval. Okay. Second. Okay. Seconded by Victor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. The older I get, the more I want the ambulance to be ready to come. Um, Treasurer's report. Updates on town financial issues, action possible. Dorinda. No update. I mean, uh, 
we're just trying to catch up from doing all the budget stuff and all that, so there really is nothing here to report on. Hopefully, we'll get you out for the next meeting uh, budget status report. Yeah. I know it's been a little bit. But there's nothing you're aware of that's nope. lacking? Everything's perfect. I mean, everything's going very smoothly. Well, that's just good to hear. Report. Thank you. Thank you. Approving minutes of the January 17th and January 24 special select board meeting action likely. Um, we should probably do them separately because I think we had different people, didn't we? <coughs> I can't remember. I'm sorry? You have them right there in front of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, 117, everybody was present. And uh, 124, everyone was present. Okay. So we could actually do them together if someone's willing to make that motion. Does anybody have any amendments or corrections to the minutes? I don't. I move that <coughs> we accept the minutes of January 17th and January 24th. Yep. As noted. <coughs> Second. Seconded by Randy, Sarah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've approved the minutes. <coughs> the fire department just arrived. <laughs> well, this was about the ambulance agreement, but you went early. I'm sorry about the what? Ambulance, ambulance agreement. agreement. Oh, okay. Um, we have approved it. Do um, you have any comments or questions about it? Yes. Comments. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't see it until <coughs> yesterday. Excuse me. Yep. Uh, so, looking at it, so they only, yeah. <coughs> the big thing, do you guys realize that in addition to the fee we pay, they charge the residents? Yes. Okay. Per call. Right. Okay, just so you agree right. with that. And by the looks of this contract this year, this is only for one year because in our district meetings that we go to, um, the ambulance services that are unionized now, they are looking to hire on as a regional ambulance service, which means for us that they could drop this. It says right here, they could they could back out of this um, in 20, by 2024, yeah. which would leave us without an ambulance service. We would be dependent on that regional ambulance, which could leave us waiting for an ambulance service for who knows, who knows where that, where that ambulance is coming from at this point, because we have no regional ambulance services in this area. I understand. So, I understand all that, but if, if we don't sign this contract, we won't have any ambulance service <laughs> pretty quick. Well, not by tomorrow. We had time. I was also looking at other services. My player is not the only ambulance service. Oh. oh, we did not know that. Are there other viable ambulance services? We are sending <clears throat> conversations. <clears throat> One of them be Berrytown, which is currently up at, up at the Four Corner Station. Yep. So time-wise, uh, not that much difference. Where it would make a difference is going out Route 12 up towards the north side of, of Middlesex. Um, <clears throat> the other, and they're looking at the possibility of expanding, which uh, with some modifications to our station, they could put an ambulance, park an ambulance and a crew at station one. Obviously that wouldn't happen next year, but um, there's a potential that we, the building was designed to be able to make another bay door for a small yep. vehicle. And then upstairs could be reconfigured to have house uh, two bedrooms. Um, <clears throat> we already have the showers. Yeah, we have the showers and the bathroom. Um, so that's a, that's a possibility of looking at trying to get a cost from them um, to what it would be. 
The thing that concerns me is this regional ambulance <coughs> service that they're pushing towards, yet there's no, there isn't anything out there yet. And um, right so. Right now we're looking at St. Johnsbury has got a regional, Brattleboro, White River. So I, I don't know where, you know, where they're, where they're going with this, if there's a plan to build an ambulance building somewhere that would take care of Washington County, um, what's the impact going to be to mutual aid? Um, what's, you know, how's Mad River, Waterbury, uh, Northfield? But aren't they, aren't they, I, I mean, they're just in the, I mean, I, I hate to say beginning phases, but they're a long way from having a plan, yes. from what I understand. That's what concerns me that they're putting this in this agreement right now, that they can back out and there really isn't a plan yet. So are they gonna back out before there's a plan and they're just gonna take care of Montpelier and that's it? Uh, not, well, we signed the contract, I wouldn't assume. The contract is only for one year though. In the, in it's the past. Bi biannual, it goes through December of 24. It's a two year period. It's a two year period. July 1 of 23 to June 30 of 25. But as I read it, they can back out of this. Well, that's what's concerning. What it says is the city, if the city explores joining a regional ambulance service during the period of this agreement or shortly thereafter, up to six months, the city shall negotiate in concert with the town so as to maximize the interests of both the city and the town. That doesn't say they can back out of the contract. I, we just want you to be aware of our concerns. No, that's good. That, that, it's, it's good to know. I just, you know, this contract is a, when this cut effective July 1st. I mean, I don't know when they're going to insist that we sign it, but it isn't going to be too long down the well, road. Yeah, how no, how quick are we going to have any additional information which would impact our decision on this? That's the $64,000 question as to primarily what this looks like is Berry City and Montpelier because they're the unionized. Uh, Berry Town is union but not with. And then the other question to ask is if they go to this regional thing, is Montpelier going to drop the personnel that they have currently on the do ambulance coverage? and cut down that so that they have even less people for fire coverage, which affects the bigger capital mutual fire. Well, there are a lot of moving parts to this. Right, and so that's, it concerns me that they're bringing this up now and there's not even, there really isn't a plan forward for this yet, but they're bringing it up, so it concerns me about that. So I just wonder if you should ask their, their city, their town manager, what is with this, Regional I can tell you, they don't know. They, I mean, I, I, I they, you know, we can, we can, we can ask, we can have a conversation, um, but I don't think we're going to hear anything different from what we're hearing from you guys. I mean, they've been exploring this for the, the, a long time. The, the, oh. My, the, the my recommendation is that we line out the, the, the regional ambulance system until they have some type of plan to put forward so we can look at. Yeah, but all this all this says is, all this says is, if the city explores joining a regional ambulance service during the period of this agreement or shortly thereafter, the city will negotiate in concert with the town. Right. I mean, if this is a two-year contract, they're saying up to six months after the term of this contract or this, right. this agreement. So it could be a couple of years. I don't think they're they're spelling out that they're trying to do this within the next six months. I don't think that's, that that's what they're trying to say here. But I, you need to look at the law. If they do become regional in this time period, what that means for our residents that are in need of an ambulance. So God forbid anybody in here has a heart attack and we're there. We're trying to care for you. We're trying to keep you alive, but we're waiting for an ambulance that's coming from Sure, and I don't think that, that being in this agreement stops us from having those conversations right. ar around exploring what the future may look like. 
and that's why I wanted to I mean, wait it, until we. So are they? Are they? I mean, they've had over the years. They've had all kinds of regional meetings. <laughs> have they recently had had meetings on this subject? Because I haven't seen any report of them in the newspaper. I have one next week. We have a district six meeting. Okay, and 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 what is that? That's a regional meeting from all the different towns. We have a district six meeting. So the dis that's the the district. Six. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The EMS, you got the EMS side, which is district six, and then you have capital fire mutual aid. Yeah. So they're essentially the same people. They just go to different. It's two meetings that we go to. We're both in, if we're EMS and fire. I think it's very good to be aware of this and pay attention to it. Really pay attention to it. Obviously, it's important. I agree with you 100%. But I don't see how lining out that line in this contract is going to change is going to change any of that. I mean, we just need to be a, to pay attention and be ready to respond. I find it hard to believe that they aren't going to want us to be part of whatever the deal is. Why wouldn't they want our eighty thousand dollars a year? I, we just want you to be aware of of the potential out there and uh, okay okay that's the big thing is well please please keep keep up if you're attending the meetings you know keep us posted on what's going on because we don't to the best of my knowledge we don't get copies of the minutes of those meetings do we sarah no. so maybe you should make a point of sharing those minutes with us so we can be we can read them and be aware of what's going on because there is there hasn't been much in the paper because if it was i I'd, I'd see it yeah. Um, and I haven't seen anything, nor have I heard any rumblings other than from uh, other than from you guys. So I guess the question is, guys, they're recommending. I mean, is this a formal recommendation that we line out that? That's a that's a suggestion. I don't think you can do that, can you? No, I don't think so. I, I don't, don't think so. Well, this I this mean, is what I believe in the legal world is called a unilateral contract. They give us the contract and we either sign it or we or don't. They're not going to tolerate us making pen and ink adjustments to their contract, I don't think. Well, when I had called the chief in Montpelier and discussed with them that, you know, we had our contracts that were coming up, his response to me was, well, in the past we have never discussed this before because I had told him that I would like to discuss, you know, being new, the new fast squad di director. Yeah. I said, you know, I'd like to sit down and discuss what has gone on in the past. And he said, well, in the past. And then he said, well, I'll put you in for a meeting. I had never heard back from him. Yeah. So then, and then I read this on the forum, on, in the forum the other day, and I was like, oh, I got blindsided by it. Well, I guess unless other board members feel differently, I think we should encourage you to communicate with us and let us know what's going on for sure and get us a copy of those minutes so we have them in our our record here and we've got them on our our uh, radar screen and we just all need to pay attention and if it looks like some kind of a crisis is coming up where they're going to fail to supply ambulance services to this to us or to any of the other small towns that's when we have to kick and fight but i i don't think i i, I just don't know i mean how how can any of us know but I just find it hard to believe that they're gonna they're gonna drop us like a hot rock. I mean that doesn't make any sense. Now, what the expenses are gonna be, as you know, we're we're dealing with this whole dispatch thing and what you know, they want a bunch of money for that, and that's been that's been going on forever as well. And, you know, maybe it's going ahead, maybe it isn't, we don't know. But uh, we've got that one on our radar screen as as well. Well it's easy enough to forward the minutes on the server. That's not a, yeah. that's easy. Yeah. So. No, that would be good. Okay. Well, is everybody in agreement with that? I am. Phil, you're okay with that? <clears throat> yeah, I am. The, the only thing that worries me a little bit is that last, you know, sub paragraph five. It's just poorly written. And, you know, whenever you get into hassles and then trying to interpret the language on something like this, it might be worth having Rob take a quick look at it and see if it raises any red flags for him. I mean, we can do that. I just don't, uh, all they're saying is that they're going to negotiate in good faith and concert with us. I don't see how that can be a bad thing. 
I mean, I, I think that I, I, I don't, I don't. It may not be, it may, may not be the best, the mess, the best writing, but I think the message and the intent is pretty clear. I don't know. I think, I think what Rob would say, and I'm not putting words in his mouth, but I think, I think he would say it means, it, it says what it means, and it means what it says. And how, and how that comes down and how that comes into play is, of course, going to be a, going to be a question mark. But uh, I don't know. I guess unless any other board members uh, disagree, I would, I would leave the sleeping dog to lie and just, just make sure that we pay attention to what's going on. And, if you, have, if you have concerns, if you start to hear from your cohorts that there's something going on that we need to know about, please let us know. I mean, you don't have to show up at a meeting. You can send us an email. You can send us a letter and say, hey, you should be aware that this happened or that happened or whatever. And believe me, we'll, we'll pay attention. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. See you next time for third. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, approving a class one liquor license for the local action likely. We have a whole new system of liquor licenses now. Right. I just got it. Um, we got, um, so the system now is there, you can no longer you sign anything, you just go to approve it, and I go into the portal and click approve. Um, so this is for a class one liquor license, uh, and there seems to be some confusion about it, but according to the local, what they really needed is they needed to be able to hold events in this little grotto next to their wine store. So it's a, it's a, it's a bar restaurant license, but it's just for wine taste, tastings, and they might have other events. So that's what they're going to do. And, and this is the business that's operating out of the same building as Red Hat? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The wine right. store down the street. Yes. Yep. It's a nice store. I'm going to do a book signing here. Hey. So sign that yeah, is wine is wine tasting involved in the book signing? I don't know. We'll have to. Yeah. I, if you don't get, they don't have a class one liquor license. I'm not sure. There's so many conflicts here. Um, but anyway, that's that is why that's why it's a class one because I called them to say, you know, are you opening a restaurant? Are you opening a bar? You know, what are you doing? So it's basically to give them the authority to serve in a fenced-in area or something outside Correct. of their Correct. shop. Right. Yeah, right, and actually that's another thing, is if they decide to host any events or serve any one of these events at Camp Need, they can do that. I talked to the Department of Liquor Control, and they said they don't need a class license, class one liquor license for that. And Sam, who runs the local, said, yes, we do. This is what we need to have. So, in other words, they're not opening a bar, they're not opening a restaurant, that's what they need a class one liquor license for. I'm all for okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, don't go I'm, I'm all for wine and beer. <laughs> <laughs> the motion, gentlemen. Thriving business. That's what we need. We, uh, allow, what am I allowing? Uh, we approved the class one liquor license for uh, the local. Is there a second? Randy? Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, there we go. Uh, Spell frozen there. Yeah. Orders are going around. We just need to make sure yeah. we get three. I, I signed. So. Between the three of us, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't gone through all of them yet. One of them, there's an order in there for postage to mail out the um, ballot. And, but we're not, um, we're voiding that check, so. Okay, I, I already know. signed it. You already signed it, yeah, I know. We just found out that we are going to void it because we're, the uh, city's going to, I mean, the union's going to pay board up front and then we're going to pay the union, so. So Washington Central. And Washington yeah. Central. I have a message, if you guys are ready for discussion, Liz would like me to, to relay some messages. Sure. Okay, so the first one is that she has not had received any word on the town hall planning grant. It's supposed to be here by now, but it's not here. And the second is 
that they had over 250 responses to the town hall survey with three times as many comments. Excellent engagement for service. Last part? And they are coming. Our next our next meeting is when they're coming to present. Yeah, so that should be interesting. If they show up with cans of gasoline and blow torches, we'll know what their recommendation is. Okay, so those are two, those are two messages. I think she's stuck in the tarmac somewhere. Tomorrow, too. <laughs> did, did, was it? I asked somebody. I think it was Sarah. Me. Um. They said they got 283 responses. She said, Liz said, uh, we had over 250 responses to the town hall survey with three times as many comments. I could, I could forward, so, if you didn't get copies of it, I could forward the responses to you. Three times as many what, please? So many, pe so many people must have written mul multiple, multiple comments. comments on yeah, it. Right. that's all. So, okay, so, no, 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 I don't need anything. I was just wondering, just for clarity, Liz sent it out. Sandy Levine sent it out, and uh, Susan Clark. So does that mean that I could have fill, filled the thing out three times or seven times? I mean, Hopefully it, not. I don't know. How does that work? That's all I want to know is how does that work? <clears throat> it depends on if it's sent, it, sent through as an anonymous survey or if your name's attached to it, I'm sure. So oh, if it's tied, if it's... tracked by IP address. Yeah. Oh, there you go. What did he say? It's tracked by IP address. Tracked by IP. Okay. So if you badmouth them, they know who did that too. Only if you know their IP address. Probably. There are no secrets in this world anymore. There used to be, but there aren't anymore. Anything else, Sarah? That's it. Those are the two messages Liz wanted me to relay. Okay. So do they have a, have they compiled all of the comments somewhere? Yes, um, I can send you, I mean, they sent me a copy of the file so I can forward it to everybody. That would be great, Perfect. yeah. I'll do that tonight. Well, it's gonna be an interesting meeting on the 21st. Anything else, anyone? Okay, thank you all very much. We are adjourned. Whoa. Whoop, look at that.